Medical Adventure series filled with magical events, exciting action, and an epic storyline. It's called The Mystic Knights of Tiernano. Mystic Knights of Tiernano is a story set in ancient past in a mystical kingdom loosely based on Celtic mythology. Unlike any other children's program, the series is built entirely in Ireland, outside of Dublin, in the town of Bray. It's got the castles, it's got the backgrounds, it's got the cliffs, the green rolling hills that lend itself to the kind of uh, mythological stories that we're telling. Traditional Irish stories of Celtic warriors and magical fairies are woven into each episode. Mythical stories always been, in this case, uh, the, the Celtic legends are the ones that we're exploring. The series focuses on four magical young knights who use their powers to bring peace to their land. It's the story of four young heroes who have to save their kingdom from the onslaught of an evil queen who's uh, out to get them. They have a lot more power than we have, you know? They can make themselves disappear, they have illusions. So we're kind of playing catch up with them all the time. Mystic Knight stars Lachlan O'Meara as the group's leader, Rowan. Rowan is a young druid's apprentice, and he has a history that he doesn't understand and a future that is a, a mystery. Vincent Walsh is Angus, Rowan's loyal childhood friend. Come to tell me, have you? Come to free if you help me. Now, what kind of help might that be? As Prince Ivar, Justin Pierre plays a young royal from a distant land. He's got his own quest, first and foremost. On his ways, he bumped into these two rogues, Angus and Ivar. Lisa Dwan stars in the role of the noble and brave Princess Deirdre. I think she's constantly shocking the boys. We're surprised that she's not as princess-like as she seems. And Charlotte Bradley is the wicked queen name. I will banish all the powers of my sorcery and destroy Kells. She shows that ruling all of the island is her birthright, not just Tempera, but also the king of Kells. It would give me no small pleasure to see me and that dark fairy minor defeated. With the help of the little people of Tirna No, the knights will battle for you may while continuing their search for the missing pieces of an ancient scroll. This is my destiny. There's an ancient scroll that suggests that someone will come along who will bring peace to the land for a hundred lifetimes. With magical armor, mythical creatures, and enchanted underworlds, the mystic knights of Tirna No will have anxious young viewers ready to join in the quest. I give you Mystic Knights! The Mystic Knights of Tirna No from Saban Entertainment. Yeah. So, once again, it's like, that's why is this in this panel? Uh, this one little, they, they, they transform real quick. I'll show you. Big fan, big fan of this show. Really great times, I love their Irish accents so much. Really great music, a lot of good times. So, but then there's also, some people may think, oh well, I want these to be, there are, there's a group of fans out there who really want these series to be dark and mature, much like themselves, clearly, because they're yeah. watching shows that they're, they're meant to sell, you know, toys to Japanese children. Or for people who like to spend $100 on silly morpher toys, like myself. So, but so then there are a few more adult ones. There's a show called Garo, which I've heard is freaking fantastic you should check it out i've heard nothing but good things but then there's an original ameritoku it's actually well it's based off a japanese manga series called gyver oh, yeah. do not watch the first gyver it may have mark hamill in it but it's terrible <laughs> mark hamill's never been known as a good actor although he does have like a creepy mustache in it this is from gyver 2 dark hero which i feel is a it's a b movie at best but it's entertaining and also for any of you who might be metal gear solid fans in the audience the voice of snake plays, David Hayter plays the main guy in Guyver 2, so, wow. interesting stuff. So let's check that out. It's been a year since I first became the Guyver unit and destroyed the Kronos Corporation and their shape-changing killers, the Zonoids. But the Guyver stays in the middle, calling me to fight, to kill. At 
punching the heck out of each other, check it out. Good times. So I've got one last little clip for you. I've, I've got a few things here, but I believe, oh God, what do I show? What do I show? This, this one, this one's a good one. This is one is another one from Power Rangers RPM, and I think it's, people like to talk about how RPM is dark and serious. This one gets a little meta, a little bit, you'll see. to any and all questions regarding the Ranger Bio Series suits, vehicles, and hardware. Anyone. Speak now or forever hold your peace. What do you mean, what eyes? Right there? The front of our Zords. They are not eyes. They're optical field scanning sensors for your cockpit's A2D display. Well, they look like, well... They look like... They look like eyes. Big, googly anime eyes. Next. Sometimes when I morph, I can't help but notice this gigantic explosion right behind me for no apparent reason. I, I assume you're referring to the residual energy runoff that are sometimes necessary to clear the suit's biofield channels during the morph. I'm referring to the six-story high fireballs like that one right there. <laughs> now, can that happen to me in the kitchen or something? When we morph, is it... Absolutely 100% necessary that we scream RPM getting gear at the top of our lungs? Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, some of us out there are trying to impress chicks. Uh, it's definitely not helping. That would help me. The vocal call out is a voice recognition safety and security measure. Well, maybe we can have a bit of a change soon. A change? Uh, like, um, a Rangers to the Rescue or um, a Ranger Justice Unleashed? Justice is an abstract ideological concept. We deal with tangible realities, not justice. You want justice? Read a comic book. Next. <laughs> Burn! So, they're probably gonna kick me out soon. Does anyone have any like questions about this genre or anything? Or, yeah, yes, sir, you. Um, why do the Power Rangers, like, since they've been around since before I was born, is it their goal to make their animation really bad, like, I know it's for kids and all, but with all the stuff we have now, the Gremlins are still made up. Well, the thing is, one, the stuff does come from Japan, and it's kind of a tradition there. Two, it's sort of like a hallmark of the thing, like, and it's also, it's a lot cheaper to do. I mean, you see things like the Avengers, and it's like, that looks great. That also has $200 million to spend. They've got, they've got very tiny budgets making these shows. These shows are made on the cheap. The guy who runs the franchise, Saban, is like, I want that money. Give me all that money, you know? Like, he doesn't, he doesn't want to spend money on these. So, he's going to make these as cheap as humanly possible. So, once again, that's all I have for today. Thank you all for coming. You all were a wonderful audience. Stay groovy, guys. Stay groovy.